Schulte, and I'm an independent financial advisor and a therapist with Nia Clinics. And this is Nia Clinics Presents. Talk to your partner about money with empathy. In other words, try to put yourself in their shoes. I didn't say you have to agree, just try to understand where they're coming from, and that way you can understand them better as well. For the first discussion point, let's go back in time. How did your caretaker or parents deal with money? How did they feel about it? And how did they raise you to feel about it? Were they the type of people to stick all their money in their mattress? Or did they spend it all on the first thing they could find? Did you go on lavish vacations or were vacations hard to come by? Did grandma give you a $500 bill on Christmas or a sack of pennies? Or maybe she asked you for money. It's possible. What about other things? How did they just feel about money? What was the nature in the household about money? What were you taught? And then what was your partner taught? How does it compare? Question two. What do you like spending money on? What do you value? There's always something that people don't want to spend money on. Usually it's something unfun like a septic tank or a new roof for your house. But somebody always wants to spend money on something. So it could be that you love designer purses. And it doesn't matter how much the purse is, you value it so much that you would spend every cent in your pocket that day on the perfect designer purse. And then your partner could say, you're crazy, that is a waste of money, purses are stupid, I would never spend money on that. So that's a value difference, and it's a difference in personality. So then what does your partner value? Does he or she wanna buy artwork? Does he value that? What about clothing? What about a new house? Are they only interested in investments? These are things you need to understand so that you can talk through your purchases and expenses with your partner. What are your long-term financial goals? When do you plan to retire, if ever? Do you just love working so much that you just want to work until you die? Or are you looking to retire crazy early, like 40 or 30 or never work at all, and you'll find some way to live? Whatever it is, you have some sort of long-term financial goal. You have dreams and hopes, and usually it has to do with money because we need it to live and to survive in some way. And your partner and you may see that totally differently. Does he wanna buy a yacht when you're retired? Maybe you wanna downsize and live in an apartment and spend all your money on your grandchildren. Whatever it is, there could be a difference there, and it is definitely worth talking about because it can help guide you figure out what to do with your money today. Question four, what are your fears related to finance? Money can be very scary, especially if you realize you're running out of it, if you're brave enough to look at your outflows or your bank statement. What else are you afraid of when it comes to money? Are you afraid of spoiling your children? Maybe you are just afraid of running out of it. Are you afraid you won't know what to do with it if you make too much of it? And as a financial advisor, I constantly hear people talk about this imaginary red line in their bucket. What I mean is they have a certain dollar figure that they arbitrarily came up with in their mind that they don't want to see their bank balance go below. So it could be anywhere from $50,000 to $200,000 to $15, and that's their red line. It very rarely makes any logical sense. It is totally emotional, and for whatever reason, they've picked this number out of the sky. I challenge you to really start thinking about this logically and talk about it with your partner. Any good financial advisor is gonna tell you that you should probably have about six months of an emergency fund ready to go to pay for your life in case something happens. Very rarely do Americans have that ready to go. So how can you change the way you're spending and change the dialogue with your partner to create that emergency fund to eliminate fear? Finally, question five. If you lost your job today, what would we do? That might sound like an obvious answer, but I think that you might get a different one than you're expecting from certain people. 
Some people might sit around and kind of lick their wounds and wait for the next job to come around because your career is deeply entwined with your personality and your ego and your pride as well. It's part of your identity. So when you've lost it, that can be a huge hit on your identity and your ego. And sometimes people need a second to rebuild their confidence and start again. Other people, not so much. They're so terrified about the bottom line and so eager to keep providing for themselves and the people around them that they might take any job that they can find. Like, do you want fries with that kind of stuff? They would do anything to make sure that there was cash there waiting for themselves and their family and would not be able to stand sitting around knowing that their red line in the bucket is going down each and every day. How does your partner feel? This is such an important question. People lose their jobs all the time, and sometimes it's not their fault. In fact, oftentimes it's not their fault, especially if you're working in corporate America where downsizing is a real issue. What happens if we do have another recession? Or just a setback in the market in general? A setback in unemployment? What will you guys do? How will you be a support system to each other and start fresh? These five prompts are simply conversation starters, and just five ideas for them. It's just meant to start a conversation with your partner about something as uncomfortable as money. Just like religion and politics, we rarely want to talk about it because again, it is so deeply intertwined in our identity. And if anybody were to attack us on those items, it really hurts. So talking about these items in these five ways is a non-threatening way to approach it. So that way you're growing your relationship and not breaking it down. Thank you for listening. And again, this is Leah Schulte with Naya Clinics. See you next time on Naya Clinics Presents.